Hi everyone, welcome to another webisode of The Good Doctor on EasyLiving.com. Today's topic of conversation is aortic aneurysm. What is it? Who gets it? What are the symptoms? And what are the cures? These are the subject matters that we're going to be talking about on this webisode with Dr. Amit Kumar. Stay tuned. What is an aortic aneurysm? So the way blood flows in the body is that you have a central station up here in the chest. From this, all the good blood goes to different parts of the body in something called the arteries. These are the red blood vessels that we all know about in all the pictures that we look at. But then the blood has to come back up. This comes back up in something called the veins. That's not what the focus of our talk today is. What we're going to discuss is the blood which is going in the arteries, the red blood, the good blood that's going to all parts. Now think of a highway, think of a road. There's a main road that goes straight across the city, regardless of which city you might live in, but it has many, many exits that go to different parts of the body. What the main road does is it communicates the traffic going singularly forward. Now this main road can become too big, and in which case it can pop. So these are the things that we'll talk about as we go on during our discussion today about aortic aneurysms, which is the main tube going in the body and what can happen to it. You talked about a traffic jam. What happens if the highway erupts? What are some of the symptoms that a patient or an individual will immediately feel? So the aorta itself goes through the chest as well as the belly. If anything tends to pop, it tends to cause pain. It can cause pain in the front of the chest, in the back of the chest, in the front of the belly, or in the back of the belly. And as it becomes more severe, as it pops, then suddenly all the traffic is outside the main highway. Mm -hmm. There is no more traffic in the highway. That means there is no more blood in the circulation. And this is why so many people die as the first presentation of something like an aortic aneurysm bursting. When you say pop, I'm thinking of a balloon popping. Is it the same kind of effect or does, it, does the wall gradually sort of deteriorate and blood starts to leak, like a dam breaking? It is like a balloon popping. As the balloon comes under more and more pressure, it pops. And when it pops, the water just comes out. Same thing, the traffic just bursts out of the highway. Same thing, the blood comes out of the tube. So there's not enough time for the effects of inadequate blood flow going to the different parts of the body because there's suddenly no blood. Uh -huh. okay. That's why people black out, that's why people suddenly die because of the fact that when it pops, it just pops. Now, the popping can be gradual, in which case you'll have the symptoms of pain because it's expanding, it's becoming bigger and bigger, it's physically growing uh, in size as we talk within sec seconds to minutes that this happens. From what age should we be worried about aortic aneurysms? You can see a large spectrum of age ranges, but typically one says that above 65 years old, you need to be checked for it. So in the United States, what we've done is that patients who are above 65 years old, specifically men who have a history of having smoked, need to be checked, which is called a screening test, which is quite simple, it's just an ultrasound. You talked about smoking, that's a lifestyle. So what kind of uh, lifestyle hazards would contribute, contribute or exacerbate uh, in a, in a, an aortic aneurysm? Smoking, clearly a very high risk factor. Uh, if you've smoked, you have a three to five times increased risk of having an aortic aneurysm. Okay. Uh, if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all these things are predisposing factors to developing and increasing of size of the aortic aneurysm. So we've understood what an aortic aneurysm is, we understand the symptoms, we understand who uh, is most likely to get it. Uh, now let's talk about the procedure. And in order to do that, Dr. Kumar is going to demonstrate to you in a live scenario what the procedure looks like. Stay tuned. So here's the heart, which is a central station that we talked about. This is the main road, which is the aorta, which is what we're talking about. And here you can see that there's a bit of a bubble here. It's grown a little bit bigger. Now the problem, as you remember, is bubbles burst. 
The bigger the bubble, the more the chances of bursting. So what do we do? Here you see a catheter being introduced because we're showing you the catheter-based technique, which is the stent technique, rather than the open operation. You put it in, now you're seeing it open up, so it's actually creating a tube within your tube that allows blood to go inside this as opposed to going on the outside and leading to the pressure of bursting. And then put another stent in so you have to make sure it's going from normal to normal with a tube inside. It's like a bridge over a balloon that's about to burst. And then it goes down, you're done. You're in the hospital for two to three days at most and you're on your way home back to work. Now the same thing can be done for the lower part of the aorta which is in the belly. This is the abdominal aortic aneurysm. These can be at different levels. The most common one is one below the kidney artery which is called the infrarenal, below the renal artery aneurysm. These are again treated with stents these days as a standard of care. There is an open operation which has been done for decades which is amazingly good in its results but has a higher risk because it's a bigger operation. What does this stent do? Once again, you put the stent in. Remember, it's like a bridge across a big balloon that's about to pop. And so you put this stent coming in right there. Then you put the other two parts. And the only thing that you're going to walk out with after the procedure is done over the next couple of days that you leave the hospital will be two cuts in the groin. And that's it. So there we have it. We just talked about and demonstrated how an aortic aneurysm surgery takes place. Any other key factors that our audience should be aware of? So the key thing is not to panic. This is not something that you have to diagnose. It's important for you to know about the pathology, about the existence of such a thing. And for you to know, somebody in the family has it, you should go and get yourself checked. It's a simple test with an ultrasound, if required based on clinical examination. And most importantly, if you have anybody in the family who is above 65, especially men who have a history of smoking, should just go and get themselves checked. Majority of people are asymptomatic. They have no problem with this thing. And the first problem that presents is the pain and the rupturing sensation, which increases the risk of dying. And therefore, stay in touch with your physician. See a vascular physician if you have somebody which ha who has pain that is such severe that it's not going away. On this subject matter, if you've got any thoughts, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching The Good Doctor on easyliving.com where you can find anything and everything lifestyle.